Hi, in this video we're going to do another string challenge, manipulating strings with C sharp. So here's what we're going to create. I'm going to show you how to use a simple algorithm that will substitute one type of letter for another. So supposedly Christopher Columbus said this quote at the bottom. It says, following the light of the sun, we left the old world. So what I want to do is use this phrase and then a dictionary. So the dictionary you can see is listed here as letter pairs. So we swap one letter for another. And I've chosen to swap the vowels for certain symbols on the keyboard. And when we're done, we'll have an output that shows the swap has taken place. So if this is interesting to you, stick around and I'll show you one way to program this. My name is Shad Sluter and I teach software development at Grand Canyon University. If computer science or this kind of topic is interesting to you, then make sure you subscribe so you can attend class virtually with us. And if you are successful, I can help you become a software developer or some other goal in technology that you might have. So quickly, let me show you the code that we're going to create here and then I'll show you the explanation. So we have a starting character, we have a dictionary, then we have a for loop that goes to check to see if any letter in that dictionary matches. And when we're done, we'll output both of these items at the bottom and we should get something that looks like this. So I'll run the application and you can see that I print the dictionary and then I print the, uh, the original and then the changed string. So that's what we're gonna do next. So let's start with a project here. This is a console app for C Sharp in Visual Studio. The first thing I need to do is create my string. So I'm going to name my string as starting string. And uh, you can pick any string you want. I'm going to pick one of the famous quotes from Christopher Columbus that says, following the light of the sun, we left the old world. And so pick something that has enough letters in it that you can substitute vowels or whatever you wish to put into the dictionary. Next, I'm going to define an ending string. So later we're going to change this from a string to an array of characters or char characters. But right now we're going to start with this simpler addition here of just an empty string and we'll build on it. Next, I want to define a dictionary. So now if you're not used to using dictionaries, they come in the collections of dictionaries, stacks, queues, lists, and hash sets. So a dictionary is a nice way to have numbered pairs or lettered pairs. So you can look things up. So since I'm just substituting one letter for the other, my dictionary is going to have two pairs of chars. So a char and another char. So to add a numbered pair, you just type in the word dict for dictionary, type a dot add, and then you need two char characters. Now remember chars are single quoted things. A single letter at a time is all you can do with a char. So I'm going to go through the alphabet with the, elf, uh, with the uh, vowels. So A is going to be substituted with the at symbol, and let's go with I, E, O, and U, A, E, I, O, U, substituting a character from the keyboard. Now you can use other letters if you want, or as you can see I'm doing here, I'm substituting characters with the uh, top row, with the shift key and all the numbers. So something that looks kind of like the letter, and let's see if we can make a dictionary that has at least five or six different substitutions. So now let's give the users the courtesy of knowing what substitutions have been made. So I'm going to print a console line and say, here is the list of character substitutions. And then we'll go through a for loop and print each one. So to make this work, let's just use a for each loop. So I type in for each, tab tab, and I change the word collection to dictionary. And then I print off each item in the dictionary. Let's see if this does anything. I'm going to run it. So you can see that I have an error. What didn't it do? Um, I forgot to put in the parentheses following the definition of the dictionary. So let's put in those parentheses and try again. Okay, you can see the results. It says here's the list of character substitutions. So each one of these is one of the items in the dictionary. So they are letter pairs. Okay, so now it's time to go through my string and compare one letter at a time to see if it's in our dictionary. So I'll create a for loop and we'll go from I to zero to the length of the string called starting string. And then I'm going to ask about each letter if it is in the dictionary. So this statement goes like this. We say if dick dot contains key. So the key is the first part of the pair. So I want to know if this letter is in the substitution dictionary because if it's not, it would have an error if we tried to access it. So 
If it is a positive result, yes, this letter is in the dictionary, then I want to add that substituted letter on. So I'm going to take the ending string and append one letter to it. So I'll say get the letter out of the dictionary that corresponds to one of the vowels. Now the last thing we have to do, right, is to print it. Well, not quite, but let's see what the results look like. I'm going to run this and see what happens. So you can see the results here are a bunch of letters. So apparently those are all of the vowels that were in the original. So it's not quite what I want, but we at least are getting substitutions. So the part that's missing is I want to add on a letter if it is just not changed. So the first part was the if statement to say, if it's in the dictionary, then add it. Otherwise, I'm going to just add whatever was at that position. So starting string at position I. This might work, let's see what happens. And sure enough, it looks to me like we have a string here. This one is the results that says, following the light of the sun, we left the old world. So the vowels have all been changed out. Now, just for being kind to my user, I'm going to print the starting string first and then try again. There, now you can compare the old and the new. So we can see that all vowels have been changed. Now, this seems to work. However, if you were in an interview or if your computer science teacher says, but is this the most efficient way that you could code an algorithm? The answer is probably no. And the weakness is this part right here. When you start concatenating strings together, you are creating literally a lot of work for the computer. So we could make this a little bit more efficient by creating an array of characters. So what I'm going to change up here is this ending string. I'm going to delete it and change it into an array. So let's do an array of chars and we'll call it ending string, just like we had before. And now we're going to take the starting string and assign it. Now, I wish that were, could work. It doesn't seem to though. It says here, we cannot implicitly convert these to a char array. Now, a char array is a fixed length. A string is, of course, a variable length. Now let's go ahead and change this to another option. It says here, let's go to two char array. That's kind of what I like about C sharp is because you think that there probably is a function that will do what you want. And when you start typing, it seems to be there. So we're going to make this function happen. And now we have a fixed length ending array and we don't have to be concatenating to create it. It's already the right length. Now all we have to do is swap out some numbers. So we have to go down into the part where we did the plus equals, and we're gonna change that. Just take out the plus equals and substitute the I. And then we have ourselves um, a new letter at that position. Now we don't need to do anything with the else statement now because if it isn't in the dictionary, then we're just gonna leave it alone. So hopefully this gives us the same results. Let's see what happens when we run it. So there you can see that we've got ourselves the same results and hopefully a little bit more efficient code. If you'd like to see another example of working with the string manipulations, check this one out here. I've created a tutorial to how to reverse a string. Here's another one that we created in class called the Skyline Format. I'll leave a link to that one as well. And then we've also got one here that's called Swapping Vowels. So this one's quite simple. It was uh, actually easier than the one we just did, but if you wanted to swap out every vowel with the letter E, this is a, another tutorial. So these are some string manipulation tutorials. If you want to check them out, please subscribe and come back to class with me.